All right. Go. When I was little, I grew up in a small neighborhood with a bunch of boys. After we finished homeschool for the day, we rode our bikes around, went fishing, swimming, climbing trees, and every other fun thing a kid does outside. When I was eight, we went to an after school program two days a week. I was excited to play with all the other kids, but no one was playing. They were all sitting on their DS and everyone had one except for me. It didn't matter what I tried, no kid wanted to play when they had their own personal screen. This was my first experience with the isolation that devices create. As I got older, I wanted to go have adventures, explore, but everyone's heads were still down. Instead of Pokemon on a DS, it was Instagram and Snapchat on a smartphone. I was 13 when I started to feel real grief. I had no idea what, but I knew something was gone. So here's the part where this could turn into another talk about how kids should take their face out of their phone, go outside and talk to people. That's already been said so many times and it's having no effect. That's because it misses the real problem. The problem is that an entire ecosystem no longer exists. Let me help you understand what I mean by that. Imagine a herd of antelope roaming and grazing the grass on a beautiful savanna. As they roam, they're contributing to their own ecosystem. Now imagine someone introduces feed bins. The antelope stay near the bins. They no longer roam and graze across the savanna. All the animals on the savanna stop roaming, creating an unnatural order. And over time, the entire ecosystem of the savanna becomes an unrecognizable wasteland. I've heard my parents tell stories of the savanna. Teenagers roaming the mall, hanging out at the arcade, going on dates. If they wanted to connect with someone, they had to go see them. They were forced out of their house, past their insecurities and into the wild. There was no other option. And so they did, everyone did, and that was normal. That healthy ecosystem encouraged real human connection. Okay, I want you to really feel what I'm saying. I want you all to close your eyes. I want you to bring up your favorite memories as a teenager with your friends. All the times you hung out at the mall, the dumb stuff you guys did together, put yourself back in those memories. Put those images in a line. Now delete the first one. Delete the next one and the next one and the next one. Okay, open your eyes. Imagine the landscape of your memories as a teenager without any of that. It's a bit of a wasteland, isn't it? The ecosystem for those experiences doesn't exist anymore. It's worse than that. Remember all those immature moments you had as a teenager? Those moments are meant to evaporate. Now they're permanent. Because of that, we all live under constant scrutiny. We don't get the luxury of just being an immature teenager. We have to watch everything we do and say. Anything can be captured and made permanent. This environment creates an unsustainable level of anxiety and unnatural pressure. Teenagers judging each other and being insecure is normal and natural, and we can deal with it if the moments evaporate like they're meant to, but they don't. We're anxious because we have to constantly sleep with one eye open in the wasteland. I'll never forget the morning at school that I decided to notice. The girl walking next to me on her phone. All the people sitting on the benches lining the courtyard on their phones. I only saw three people not looking on their phone. These devices are not connecting us. We're all being isolated next to each other. I realized I needed to make a change. I thought I would just not go on my phone as much. I deleted social media, then I added it back. I deleted Snapchat, added it back. I charged my phone outside my room at night, but then I just charged it in my room and be back where I started. Trying to change my behavior was exhausting. Then it hit me. I'm the kid sucked into the DS. If there was no DS, we would have all played together. That's when I decided to get rid of my smartphone completely. So at 15, I got a flip phone and became isolated in a completely different way. There were times when I felt like there was no winning. I made all the changes. I put down my phone, tried to talk to people, spent time off social media. But because everyone else is still sucked in, and I do mean everyone, it didn't matter what I did. 
I was back to being the only kid without a DS. Okay, if we're not careful, you can miss the entire point of my talk right here. So listen closely. Kids are lonely, not only because they won't put their phone down, but because when they do, there's nothing there for them to turn to instead. We don't actually want our phones or social media. What we want is real connection, but that doesn't happen naturally in this new ecosystem. Everything that naturally breeds real connection has been lost. The new ecosystem breeds isolation. The opposite of addiction is not sobriety. It's human connection. Addiction happens when someone is isolated. We don't want to be addicted, but what choice do we have when we're living isolated no matter what we do? I know adults are frustrated because kids won't get their face out of their phones. And I'm inviting you to understand the real problem and to have some compassion for us because we're starving in a wasteland while you tell us to get back out there onto a savanna that doesn't exist. I'm not here to help you feel good. I'm here to help you feel how bad kids feel. I've learned how to create an oasis in this wasteland. More and more my friends are joining in. They put their phones down for the most part when we hang out. No one really records anything. And for a few hours when we hang out at the dock, playing cards, laughing, and telling stories. I imagine the possibility of roaming wild and free. Thank you. Awesome.